The Chinese already knew Meng would go free, so it looked like. But 9 a.m. BC time rolled around, and pff, she lost. She lost her application for the extradition to be dismissed. I couldn't believe it. Here's the court ruling. See for yourself. So just to be clear, she's not out of the woods yet. She had asked the court to throw out the extradition because, her lawyers argued, what she allegedly did might be a crime in the United States, breaking sanctions against Iran. But it's not a crime in Canada, which did not have those same sanctions on Iran. But the judge held that it wasn't the breaking of the sanctions that's the crime uh, to extradite her. It's lying to a bank about those sanctions in order to get a massive loan. Here, can I read to you uh, four paragraphs in a row from the ruling? It takes about two minutes to read. But it just shows what kind of person Meng Wanzhou is, what kind of company Huawei is, what kind of place China is, how the companies over there act the same way the dictatorship over there acts. There really isn't any separation line between the two of them. So this is from today's ruling. Really, these are the accusations against Meng that today's judge says would be a crime in Canada, so they're legitimate to extradite someone to a foreign country to face criminal charges there too. So just for background, HSBC Bank, you've probably heard of them, just a very big international bank, very active in Asia. Uh, they had been in trouble before for financing companies that broke U.S. sanctions, and they like to operate in America. So they had been prosecuted, and as part of a plea deal, they promised to the United States government to be extremely careful in the future about financing um, sanctions breakers. So they saw some newspaper articles by Reuters about Huawei breaking the sanctions in Iran. So they got worried. So this is the fraud part. I'm going to take two minutes to read it to you, okay? You'll learn more in the next two minutes about Meng Wanzhou than you probably learned elsewhere. So read the, let me read this to you from the court ruling. I found it very illuminating. Ready? When HSBC then made inquiries of Huawei about the reports in the Reuters articles, various Huawei representatives denied the substance of the reported allegations. Ms. Meng requested an in-person meeting with a senior HSBC executive responsible for banking operations in Asia. And such a meeting took place on August 22, 2013, in the back room of a restaurant in Hong Kong. Very dramatic. Ms. Meng spoke in Chinese and an interpreter translated into English for the benefit of the HSBC executive. Ms. Meng also showed a PowerPoint presentation written in Chinese, and sometime after the meeting provided HSBC with an English translation. In the meeting, Ms. Meng told the HSBC executive that Huawei's operations in Iran complied strictly with applicable laws and U.S. sanctions. She said that Huawei's relationship with Skycom was one of normal business cooperation in which Huawei required Skycom to make commitments to observe all applicable laws, regulations, and export control requirements. Ms. Meng said that Huawei was once a shareholder in Skycom, and she herself was once a member of Skycom's board of directors, because at that time these measures were necessary for managing Skycom as a business partner and for strengthening and monitoring its trade compliance. However, these measures later became unnecessary to ensure compliance, and Huawei sold all its shares in Skycom, and Ms. Meng resigned from Skycom's board. Ms. Meng said Huawei did business in Iran, but did so through its local subsidiary, and that Huawei subsidiaries in countries such as Iran would not transact business with HSBC. So Skycom is the company that Meng Wanzhou said, don't worry, we're not involved with them anymore. <clears throat> that would be breaking sanctions, don't you worry. I'll read a little bit more. So the HSBC Global Risk Committee met in London on March 31, 2014, to discuss reputational and regulatory concerns regarding Huawei and decided to retain Huawei's business. In reaching that decision, the committee relied on the assurances provided by Ms. Meng at the August 2013 meeting. About a month after the committee's decision, HSBC sent its letter describing terms for the proposed $900 million credit facility. That's the loan I'm talking about. And about a year after that, HSBC participated with other international banks in a $1.5 billion syndicated loan to Huawei. Although Huawei had sold its shareholding in Skycom some years before the August 2013 meeting, and Ms. Meng had resigned from Skycom's board, Huawei in reality continued to control Skycom and its banking and business operations in Iran. Skycom employees had Huawei email addresses and badges and some used Huawei stationery. 
Skycom's directors and its signatories to its bank accounts were Huawei employees. The company that had purchased Huawei's shareholding in Skycom did so with financing from Huawei, and its banking and business operations were under Huawei's control. Huawei's true relationship to Skycom is said to have been information that was material to HSBC's decision whether to continue to retain Huawei as a client. False assurances by Ms. Meng at the August 2013 meeting in Hong Kong misrepresenting the actual relationship are said to have put HSBC at risk of fines and penalties for violating the DPA plea bargain and for new violations of the U.S. sanctions. Those misrepresentations are also said to have exposed HSBC to both economic and reputational risk. Okay, I'm done reading. But you see what went on there? In that back room in the Hong Kong restaurant? She lied through her teeth to get billions of dollars that HSBC would not have given her otherwise. That's what's against the law. That's called fraud. You may not agree with the sanctions on Iran, but that's not the fraud part. The fraud part is that HSBC Bank was doing its due diligence. It couldn't invest in Iran any more than it could invest in the Hells Angels gang or some mafia you know, gambling joint. It had to be careful. It demanded a meeting. It wanted the truth. It looks like they took it seriously, I think. I don't know. Meeting with the CFO of Huawei, the founder's daughter, no less. That sounds pretty authoritative. But if these allegations are true, and it, if, it, if it really does turn out that they were meeting with the godfather herself, to keep with the mafia analogy, she lied and deceived and tricked to get billions of dollars from the bank, money the bank would not have loaned had they known of Huawei's true criminal activities. Look, I think that's just how a lot of companies in China roll. Get away with whatever you can. As long as you have the Communist Party in your pocket, you're fine. There are no independent police or independent courts or independent newspapers to investigate you or shame you or punish you. Keeping with the Godfather analogy, it's like the entire establishment is part of the protection racket, not just a few judges or a few politicians like in the movie. All of them are in their pocket. So Huawei becomes this mighty company in this corrupt swamp of China, and now wants to operate around the world and... Corrupt terrorist regimes like Iran are only too happy to do so, but places like Hong Kong and HSBC Bank in the United States, well, they're a little bit more sticklers, aren't they? So the law-breaking thing doesn't go over as well there. So Meng Wanzhou must now stand trial for extradition. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.